Okay, let's start with some polygons in the circle here. So the Greeks were able to determine formulas for certain regions like circles, parabolas, ellipses, and so on by using something called the exhaustion method. Now I'm just going to give you a rough example of this. Suppose you wanted the area of this circle down here. Well, you could inscribe a triangle into the circle as below. We know the area of a triangle, so we might say the area of the triangle is an estimate area of the circle. Obviously, this is a bad estimate because you can see uh, in here we're losing a lot of the actual area. So we could try a rectangle. Now notice the rectangle doesn't lose near as much of the accuracy, but we still lose quite a bit of accuracy here, okay? So maybe we'll try a hexagon. We can find the area of a hexagon. Okay, well now we're getting a little bit better. Obviously, we're not losing quite as much accuracy. Okay, well, this is a six-sided figure. Obviously, if I used a 12-sided polygon, if you can visualize that, I would not, I'd have just a bunch of little pieces that I did missing. A 20-sided polygon would even get closer to the actual error area, so it would reduce the error. So the more sides that I would have on this polygon, the less error I would have. So one might say that if I let the number of sides go to infinity, then I would actually, the, the area of the polygon would actually approach the true area of the circle. So maybe let the limit of the number of sides of the polygons go to infinity. Does that sound familiar? Well, what if we wanted to approximate the area of a plane region? Let's use five inscribed rectangles and then five circumscribed rectangles to estimate a lower and upper bound for the area of 5 minus x squared and the x-axis between 0 and 2. So basically, I, I, I created a picture here. So hopefully, you know, it's, it's a decent picture. I basically tried to create it myself. So here's the curve 5 minus x squared. And this is going from 0 down here. This is like x equals 0 out to uh, x equal 2. And so we have... Here, let me see if I can draw this for you. Okay, so there's x equal 2. Okay, now notice I've got five inscribed rectangles. That means they're completely within uh, the region. Well, you can see here that obviously this would give me an estimate if I add the areas of each of these rectangles. This would give me an estimate. But obviously I would lose some of the area in these regions. So, so, so obviously it's not going to give me the exact area. Okay, so, but let's see what it would give me. Okay, now remember um, the height of each of these rectangles can be calculated by, by the y value from the function. So here, um, I, I'm going to use, since I'm going to use five rectangles, Let's, we're going to divide the region into a subinterval of five subintervals from 0 to point uh, 4, from point 4 to point 8, from point 8 to 1.2, from 1.2 to 1.6, and 1.6 to 2. So, and basically, if you want to know the width of any of those subintervals, uh, all you have to do is take 2 minus 0, the difference of the two endpoints, and divide by however many we're using. So we're dividing by 5. So 2 over 5 is 0.4. So each of these subintervals has a width of 0.4 or 2 fifths. Okay, so now I know the width of each of these rectangles ha is 0.4, and I know the height of each of these rectangles are just whatever the y values is. Now these, these points here are just the approximations that it gave me, so they're not necessarily the, the value. So basically, 
if I wanted the area, if I wanted this, the area of the blue region down here, I could add the areas of each of the rectangles. So for the first rectangle, uh, we know the width is two-fifths, and the height is actually f of two-fifths, because remember this is 0.4, which gives me the height. And then the next one is two-fifths times f of four-fifths. Remember that's 0 0.8. Four-fifths is 0 0.8. And remember, they always have the same width. So two, the next one's two fifths times f of six fifths. So it's f of f of one point two. And then the next one is two fifths times f of eight fifths, um, which was the one point six. And then the next one was two fifths times f of that should say two. All right, f of two. I'm not sure where I got the five from but it's f of 2. Okay, so um, so anyway, um, now I can factor a 2 fifths, since each of these terms have a factor of 2 fifths, you can factor a 2 fifths out. And then you just evaluate the function at 2 fifths, 4 fifths, 6 fifths, 8 fifths, and 10 fifths, which of course is 2. And when I did that, and then multiplied it by 2 fifths, I got 6.48. I'll let you do that. I'm sure that'll be fun to do on the calculator. Now remember, f of 2 fifths, how do you get f of 2 fifths? You go to the function 5 minus x squared and do 5 minus 2 fifths quantity squared. And then how do you do f of 4 fifths? You go to the function, you do 5 minus 4 fifths quantity squared and so forth. Okay, well, now you can't really see the function in this in the circumscribed uh, picture, but but, you know, I'll try to draw, show you where the function would be here. So, so it would be, you know, somewhere, I think it would come down right there. But anyway, so the function would, would be in there. And then, um, for the circumscribed rectangles, what you would be getting is you would be getting an overestimation of the actual area because all of these pieces that stick out outside of the graph, that's the too much that you would be getting. Now I'm going to get this out of my way for now. Okay, so so if you notice, I went up here, I'm still going from 0 to 2. Okay, but notice that the heights of these rectangles are represented by the x value on the left side of the rectangle, whereas the height of these were, I was I actually got these by using the right side of the rectangle. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is over here, to get the height, I had to do f of 0.4, but the height of this one's going to be f of 0. And so, so, so actually, I need to back, I'm going to back everything up a little bit. So the width is still 2 fifths, but it's going to be 2 fifths times f of 0 for this one, 2 fifths times f of 2 fifths for, for this rectangle, and then the area of this rectangle is 2 fifths times f of 4 fifths, and then the area of this rectangle is 2 fifths times f of 6 fifths, and then the area of this rectangle is 2 fifths times f of 8 fifths. Well, again, you can factor a 2 fifths out of each of those terms, and then calculate what f of 0, f of 2 fifths, f of 4 fifths, f of 6 fifths, f of 8 fifths sums to, and you get 8.08. .08. So basically, wouldn't you say that we know the area under this curve from 0 to 2 between that curve and the x-axis? Wouldn't you say it's between 6.48 and 8.08? .08? Right? Because this value underestimates the actual area, and this one overestimates the actual area. So we basically got the true area trapped between these two numbers. Now what's interesting though, is if I were to double the number of rectangles here, and double the number of rectangles here, it, it would increase this number by a bit, and it would decrease this number by a bit, and I would actually have the area trapped between a smaller window. And then if I doubled that number of rectangles and doubled that number of rectangles on both examples and did the calculations, it would even make the window smaller. 
So basically, I would if I, if I do enough rectangles, I can make that window between the inscribed rectangles and the area that the inscribed rectangles give me and the area that the circumscribed rectangles give me, I can make that window very, very small. And of course, the smaller I make it, the closer I'm going to get to the actual area of the region underneath. So hopefully you can kind of see where we're headed with this concept. Now this just summarizes basically what I just said. Um, you know, if we increase the number of rectangles to 10, we would narrow the range. And if we increase the number of rectangles to 20, we would get even much smaller range for the area. But what if we allowed the number of rectangles to approach infinity? Wouldn't it make sense that the range would get closer and closer to the true area? So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a different way to write the calculations I did up here. Suppose up there, I said I equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's say I'm going to sum from I equal 1 to 5. Now remember, to get the area of each of those rectangles, I had to multiply by 2 fifths for the width. But to get the height, didn't the, wasn't the height f of 2 fifths plus f of 4 fifths plus f of 6 fifths plus f of 8 fifths plus f of 10 fifths? So in other words, the height is actually, the, the x value was actually 2i over 5 in each case, where i went from 1 to 5. So basically, we could say that we were summing 2 fifths times f of 2i over 5, where i goes from 1 to 5. And that can be calculated because I can factor the two-fifths out. And then when you evaluate the function, if you evaluate 2i over 5 for the function, now remember the function was 5 minus uh, x squared. So if you evaluate that 5 minus x squared, you'd actually get 5 minus 2i quant to the over 5 quantity squared if you evaluated it 2i minus 5, 2i over 5, I mean. Now, so this area, we could say, is represented by 2 fifths times the sum of 5 minus 2i over 5 quantity squared. Now, I'm going to just summarize this calculation below. But remember a while ago when I was able to find the sum from i equal 1 to 5, and then I was able to get the sum of, say, an expression, because if you square that, you're going to get 4i squared over 25. So basically, we're going to be summing 4i squared over 25, which is the same as saying 4 25ths sum of i squared. And then using the formula we had a while ago for i squared, we can get 5 times 6 times 11 over 6. And so we get 4 25ths of that. And then uh, I just went ahead and figured out that's going to end up being 44 fifths. So I'm going to have 25 minus 44 fifths times 2 fifths, and then 2 fifths times 81 fifths gave me 162 over 25, which is 6.48. So see, that's another way. Now, the other side's a little more complicated because, remember, we had to go from 0. We actually went from 0 to 4. We didn't actually go all the way out to 5. So we went to 0 fifths, 2 fifths, uh, I think we went 0 fifths, 4 fifths. Uh, what did we do? Yeah, we went 0 fifths, f of 2 fifths, f of 4 fifths, f of 6 fifths, f of 8 fifths. So basically, that would be a little bit more complicated. So in that one, we're going to have to go um, 2 fifths, f of 2 times i minus 1 over 5. That way, when i is 1, you're going to get 0, f of 0. And then when i is 2, you're going to get f of 2 fifths. And when i is 3, you're going to get f, sorry, i is 2, you're going to get f of 1 fifth. 2 times 1 fifth, and when, at, when i is 3, you're going to get um, 2 times 2 fifths, and when i is 4, you're going to get 2 times 3 fifths, and so forth. Well, if you square that, it's, it's more complicated, but you're going to get something like this when you factor the 2 fifths out. And then let me just say, if you go through a bunch of arithmetic and use your formulas for the sum of i squared, sum of i, and so forth, let me just go ahead and say you will actually get the same value that I got once you did that.
So I'm going to finish this on the next video.